And one week we were actually sitting on a bench on the front porch of that old farmhouse with the kids running around the yard when Chip got a call on his cell phone. I heard him say, uh, sure, yes, tell them we accept. When he hung up the phone, he told me, we just got an offer on the house. It's a good offer, a really good offer. I say we take it. And here's where things just get crazy. Joe and I believe in miracles. But when we hear stories like this, we usually go, yeah, right, like that happened. But as sure as I'm sitting here reading this, my phone rang less than 10 minutes later, and it was Peggy's son. This intelligent, tough lawyer said, Chip, you know what? I've been thinking about that offer, and I don't know why, but my mom is really happy over in the villas. You guys did her right in that house. He spoke as if we'd done her this great big favor by building her a nice home, when in fact they'd been the one who trusted us that the villas were going to be great. So if you really want the farm, you've got yourself a deal. I'll give it to you for the amount you had mentioned before. I can see you and your family loving it out there. Little did he know that out there was exactly where we were sitting at that very moment. Oh, wow. That's fantastic, Chip said, standing right up with the biggest smile on his face. I got tears in my eyes just seeing Chip's expression. I stood up and he gave me a great big hug with that phone still to his ear. "Uh Uh-huh, he said. "Uh Uh-huh. Wow. You're kidding. I don't even know what to say. Thank you. Thank you so much. I got off the phone and said, Joe, you are not going to believe this. Not only is he going to sell us this place, but he's wanting to own or finance it. He said he would actually prefer a little interest on the money. He felt like this was the best deal for now. Maybe we could finance him out in a couple of years when the villas were a little closer to being completed. Joe said, what? At this point, we were literally in shock. The kids even noticed that something was going on and came running over to see what was happening. Kids, I said as Drake, Ella, Duke, and little Emmy all gathered around us. How would you like it if the farm was our home? Yeah, they all screamed. They started running around, hooting and hollering. I simply couldn't believe it. Before we signed papers on the sale of our carriage square home, and just before we passed papers to buy Peggy's farm, my phone rang. On the other end of the line was the woman from a television production company who had the crazy idea to put Chip and me on TV. It was two weeks later that the camera crew arrived, a few days after that when the houseboat arrived that Chip surprised me with, and the top guy on the crew told us, if I do my job, you two just landed yourself a reality TV show. It was 2012 by the time an even bigger camera crew came back to film a full pilot episode of Fixer Upper for HGTV, and it wouldn't be until 2013 that the show would get picked up. But we never stopped. We never slowed down. Our family just kept pushing, finding our way through. We didn't know if the TV show would ever really get off the ground, so we just kept working at making the most of our lives, despite a seemingly never-ending spate of financial obstacles. Since the houseboat wasn't a livable option, my parents let us move into their house. They had actually bought a place in Castle Heights, but later decided to move. Though they'd recently put the house on the market, it hadn't yet sold. So they said, hey, we know you're working on the farm. Why don't you just live in our house for a while? We don't have to sell it tomorrow. The timing worked out great, and we were so thankful. It worked out well for the pilot episode, too, since we were right in the middle of renovating the farm, and that made some good TV. It showed how we were starting over, starting fresh, turning something that was outdated into the home of our dreams, just like we do for our clients. We loved being outside so much at the farm that the first thing Joe had me build was this big outdoor fireplace. We built the whole thing out of these antique bricks we'd found. She also got started on a garden. The house became really the secondary concern. Every time we'd get some cash together, we'd go out there to do some remodeling. We always ended up doing some other project outside. I guess subconsciously, we decided we'd just take it slow and do what we could when we could, which was definitely a change of pace from our normal routine. We'd drive out into the country and sit at what felt like our vacation home, only this vacation home needed a boatload of work. We would sit beside that fire and Joe would tend to her garden. And then we would go inside and just mess around, trying to figure out what we were going to do next with whatever money came in. We knew we needed to expand the house some. We were eventually able to figure out how to create a lot of room upstairs in the attic, which was unused space at the time. But before we built anything out, we ripped things apart, hoping to find some old beams and hardwood floors. And when we tore off the drywall, we found shiplap everywhere. So I was instantly like, we're using that as our finished wall. We painted it all white and didn't bother filling in any of the nail holes or anything. The way I saw it, every one of those nail holes was a little piece of history, and they all added character to the home. And just as important, we saved eight grand in drywall costs right there. 
We were always thrifty, and we loved using old materials, making our own things, doing the work ourselves when we could. It was our job. It was our passion. And this farm was our dream. We couldn't wait until it was time to move in. Back in the late 1800s, when a place like this was originally built, you had to work with what you had. You had to figure stuff out. You certainly couldn't Google it. You didn't have the internet. You didn't even have how-to books. You had to sit there and wrestle with it. You found this old spare part. You did this other thing. You hooked it up to a donkey and you just tried it out. Sometimes it worked. Sometimes it didn't. But eventually, you'd pop out on the other side and say, I've got this. Call me old-fashioned, but I've always liked to solve problems like that. It took us quite a while before we made things happen to the farm and got it to a point that it was move-in ready. Then we stopped and looked back at all we'd done, the good times and the bad, the times when we were literally flush with cash and the times we could barely pay our bills. Did this mean we were finally out of the woods? It sure felt like it. We had managed to keep our heads above water through some really tough times. And even in those tough times, our precious employees had continued to play a huge part in our business. They stuck it out with us. Some of these employees went way back with us, all the way back to the very beginning. Most of the boys who'd helped with my early flips were still around. You probably know a couple of them, Shorty, Jose from the show. Even before that, one of the guys who mowed lawns with me, ironically, was Shorty and Jose's father-in-law. His daughter was the very first girl I ever hired to help me run that little corner wash and fold over by Baylor. She's still with us today. We don't own that wash and fold anymore, but she works at our company. So does Joe's friend, who worked with her before she decided to close the shop. Looking back, it's just amazing to see how all this ties together. Those people had seen how hard we'd worked and how we always tried to pay them first no matter what, during all those tough times, without even purposefully trying, just by being who we are and doing what we do, we'd created a Magnolia family. The work we did managed to touch a lot of people's lives, and it's just not possible to put into words the gratitude we feel for each and every person who helped us along the way. A couple of our suppliers bent over backward for us during those lean times, too. A few of them gave us extra time to pay for some of the materials we needed in order to keep going. They say it takes a village to raise a child. I'd like to amend that and say it takes a village to run a small business. We're glad we doubled down on the renovation business during that tough period. We focused heavily on the real estate side of the Magnolia Homes business, too. Both listing and selling homes in and around Waco and helping buyers find that home of their dreams. We especially liked it when we could find our customers a home that wasn't quite move-in ready, but was in their price range. We could offer a renovation service as a way to turn that fixer-upper into a home that they really loved. Not only were jobs like that fun and fulfilling, they really allowed us to put all of our skills to work. They were the jobs that kept us afloat financially. Well, guess what? That evolving business model was just the thing that pushed the concept of a Chip and Joanna TV show over the top. The folks at HGTV love the idea of following home buyers through the process from start to finish, from selection through renovation, with a big reveal at the end when they finally saw the finished product. I find it interesting that the skills we honed flipping houses had prepared us for the grueling time commitments involved with filming client-based renovations for television. They said all this made for great TV. I mean, the timing of it all couldn't have worked out any better. As with the sizzle reel, we couldn't have scripted any of these things if we tried. We didn't know what made great TV. We were just trying to make a living and trying hard to honor the craft we had both fallen in love with over the years. We'd been in business for more than 10 years, and by then I think people in Waco had come to know who we were and what we were all about. So when some of this started hitting, Waco seemed to support us and protect us. We were not stars here. We were just the same Chip and Joe they'd always known and supported for years. I also love the fact that we'd never quit. We fought like cats and dogs to the bitter end, and one thing led to another. Next thing you know, the remodeling business was booming, our flips were flipping, rentals were renting, and banks started loaning again. All that happened right around the time that the TV show got picked up in 2013. Then all of a sudden, we had these camera crews around us, and all of these assistant directors and sound guys and production assistants and network executives were telling us how unique we were and how they loved our work and how great this TV show was going to be. It was just all surreal, like one of those dreams where you can't tell fact from fiction. Honestly, I needed that boost after going through all those ups and downs. I just felt vindicated. We'd spent all this time doing the best we could every day. And for the people to notice, it was really rewarding. It was certainly not about the money. There are very talented artists and craftsmen of all sorts who do amazing work who aren't getting rich. 
But for us to come out on the other side having a little bit of money again and having some accolades coming in, yeah, it was nice. One thing we were excited to do was get Peggy's son his money to finance that owner finance loan he'd been so generous to extend us. He had been so patient, but now that the villas were in a great place, that made it much easier for the banks to take him out, finally, which is exactly what he said would happen. As things continued to improve and our business got healthier and healthier, we wanted to get one last thing cleared up. So we called up the couple who had loaned us the $100,000 that allowed us to keep going during that terrible downturn. Hey, we said when they answered the phone, we were in the neighborhood. Do you mind if we come by and say hi? We had originally told them that our intention was to pay that money back within a year. When that year came and went and we told them it would take a little while longer, they didn't fuss one bit. In fact, they reiterated their original position. Their generosity was crippling. In a world full of contracts and legalities, they could have chosen to throw the terms of this deal in our face. But instead, they chose to be gracious and patient as we worked this out. We stopped by that day and we handed them a check for $130,000. I said, even though this is what we agreed on, I just want you to know I feel I owe you infinitely more than this. You both have meant the world to us. We wouldn't even be here if it weren't for you. They both got tears in their eyes, and they said it came at just the right time. As I've mentioned, they weren't independently wealthy people, and it turns out they were in a spot where they needed to make some decisions for their family. Having that money at their disposal was going to help make that decision even easier. Getting both of those loans taken care of felt so good. Those were people who had been over backwards for us. We honestly wouldn't even be here talking about any of this if it weren't for them. When it came to the couple who loaned us that money, we wound up circling back with them. A year after we paid them back, they came to us looking to buy a new house. They even came with a big renovation budget to work with. And guess how much they budgeted for renovations? $130,000. They turned right around and sank that exact amount of money into their dream home. What are the chances? These circumstances were woven in such a way that you had to just sit back and marvel. Most things in life are just beyond our planning and our control, even when it comes to the farm. Back when we first fell in love with the land, we had all sorts of doubts about spending more money than we had in order to buy it. We shouldn't be doing this, we said. Is this stupid, we wondered. But now both of us agree. God allowed Peggy's son to own or finance that for us. God knew that in the season of life we were about to encounter, we would need a place to retreat to, where our kids could be away from it all and we could center ourselves. We truly believe that God put those plans in action because he knew what we would need as a family, even though we didn't have any clue what we needed ourselves. How could we have possibly known that bringing some cameras into film, chipping me at work, and at home on the farm would turn into a big hit TV show? Apparently, other people knew. The network people were confident about it, but we certainly didn't know. From what we'd heard, reality TV shows were all about people yelling and screaming and flipping tables over for the cameras. What we would come to learn is that every show is different. Every situation is unique. The network didn't ask us to do anything other than be ourselves. What we learned from being around the folks at HGTV is that shows that have a heart behind them and are authentic tend to have the most loyal audiences. The other things we have learned about television is we are thankful to be associated with HGTV and with High Noon Entertainment, the production company that films our show. Both have been good to us. They have honored our family, our story, and our town. They didn't have to do that. And no matter how this all shakes out, we will be forever grateful to them for allowing us to tell our story. I have to say I'm glad authenticity is something they wanted, because that was all they were going to get from Chip and me. Nobody could ever script Chip Carter Gaines, even if they tried. And I would never have signed on if I couldn't be myself. I've come way too far in my life and career to compromise now, and for HGTV to allow us to be faithful to who we are and to showcase our business and our expertise has been an absolute honor. We love our kids, we love each other, we love this town, and we love our clients. That's the heart behind our show. We're a real couple and a real company, and we do real jobs for people with real budgets. When there's heart and substance on a TV show, the drama just isn't needed. What we do on camera is what we do in real life. Well, there is one exception. That big canvas, we love to surprise our clients, but we'd never done that before. You know, Chip and the producer came up with that idea at the very last minute when we were working on the pilot. There was a problem as to how to surprise a client, and as always, Chip got with the boys and figured it out. I suppose that could be considered a bit of drama that we added to the show, but even that came from the heart. It never gets old. That moment when we pull back that picture and we see our clients' faces as they experience their fixed-up new home for the very first time. 
We've spent weeks, sometimes months, getting to know these people, and it's just very moving to us to make them happy. Chip and I both know how important home is, and we love sharing that feeling with them. That we get to have a show like this on national television, doing exactly what we're passionate about, is really a gift. They left it unscripted from the start, and I think people feel that. This is just our life. I mean, honestly, I don't think there's anyone on television who'd pick up a dead cockroach off the floor and pop it into his mouth on camera. My husband is that guy. He has always been that guy, especially when 50 bucks is on the line. Come hang out with a bunch of his old college buddies sometime and listen to their chip stories, and you'll know for certain that the chip you see on TV is the same chip we all see at home. He just has a way of making things fun. There are times at the end of a long day in front of the cameras when I just want to be done. It's a lot of work not only to do our job, but also keep our energy up and try to get what they need for the cameras. But Chip will extend our day even further by annoying the heck out of me, trying out bad jokes and performing silly antics while the cameras are rolling, just to keep it amusing. If it wasn't for him making me laugh, though, I might just work myself to death. That's another funny thing that changed once we moved out to the farm. Joe seems to work twice as hard as I do now. She always has ten things going on. I used to be the one that was sort of juggling a million things all at once. But now I've slowed down a bit, and she's sped up. It's just interesting to watch how roles change like that. I think that's just part of what comes along with the kids getting older, too. Once they were in school, it became a whole lot easier to get work done outside the home. But being dedicated to our kids also meant we had to keep this TV show thing close to home. That meant setting some ground rules early on. We carved out certain hours each day that we needed to set aside for family and business and insisted we would never travel more than 30 minutes outside of the Waco area for our renovation projects. We needed to be home for our kids, and their needs were going to come first as much as humanly possible. We did try to be flexible, of course, knowing they were spending a lot of money to shoot the show and paying that whole professional crew who showed up in Waco with all of their equipment and trucks and union rules. So some compromise seemed in order, but we've still tried to stick to our ground rules as much as possible, even after the show took off and we knew it was a hit. Honestly, we had no idea what we were in for. No idea at all. The pilot alone earned big ratings when they aired it in May of 2013. Everybody at the network got pretty excited. But once the first episode of the series aired in April of 2014, the show took off. I mean, took off like wildfire. Suddenly, we were being recognized, even when we left Waco. People were stopping us in stores and coming up to us at restaurants. I didn't know so many people watched HGTV, and I couldn't believe how many people had seen our show. We still didn't own a TV, so the only way we knew when our show was on, if we didn't go to a friend's house to watch it, was when our phones would start blowing up with texts of congratulations, or when emails would be streaming in from all over the country asking us to do remodels. We started getting all sorts of interview requests, and folks were asking us to speak at their events or their churches. It was absolutely crazy. Overnight, our lives were turned upside down. I was just real thankful that we had the peace and the quiet of the farm to go back to at the end of a busy day. It really did become our sanctuary. 